Cassie, aka The Crafting Chef, bringing you another tutorial on behalf of Sub This and That Monthly Sublimation Box. For today's tutorial, we're working from our January 2022 box titled, Love is in the Air. I am very excited about all the products you see in front of you. Make sure you check out the description below to see what each item is. So, Let's get started. For today's tutorial, we're going to sublimate the wine stopper, the wine glass charm, and the frosted wine glass. This is probably like one of my favorite sets out of this box. This is a great thing that you can actually use as a gift set along with other sub this and that items like the wine bottle holder, the wine bottle bag. Um, this is just an awesome set to gift someone. So we're gonna start with first removing our protective layer from the disc. I'm going to wipe them off. Line them up, tape them down. So I'm going to take this over to my heat press. I'm going to press this at 400 degrees, 60 seconds, medium to firm pressure. So I remove them from the heat press. Here's what the two pieces look like. This one has a, a grayish uh, background. And this one I kept plain um, just because I didn't want anything to clash with uh, the red beads. And I wanted you to be able to um, read it. So we will remove the adhesive covering. And we'll stick this down. Same thing with the wine bottle stopper. I just cut my nails today, so it's so hard to peel. <laughs> Little pieces. I cut my thumbs and my index finger. And then we'll place it down. And there you have it. I love that the wine stoppers come in this awesome box. And now you have your wine glass charm. So we are going to take a short intermission. My heat press and my convection oven are in a room next to each other. So I cannot have them plugged in at the same time. So I have my heat press unplugged, my convection oven warming up, and we will take a short intermission and we'll come back and we'll work on this wine flute. So I am excited and nervous about doing this uh, frosted wine flute because I have not done one before. Um, what I do recommend is not to try to do a full bleed because you probably will miss this section down here. Um, and without using a warp feature on your software, it'll be hard to uh, make sure that your design is straight based on the diameter of the glass which changes as it goes from top to bottom it gets 
wider as it goes down and then narrow at the bottom. So if you don't know how to use a warp feature, which I myself have used before, but I'm not a pro at it, so I'm really still learning, um, then I do suggest not to try to do a full bleed so that you don't um, have an uneven design at the bottom or at the top or something crooked. So I'm just gonna put an image of the couple on this glass. I, I cut my image at one and a half inches. It's a round circle. I could have went a little larger, but I'm, I'm definitely playing it safe in this regard. Um, one of the things you wanna do when you do tape your image to your uh, glass is to make sure it is tight. So I'm gonna pull this to me so it may be off camera just to make sure that I'm putting my tape on here tight. So I'm going to pull, I'm going to pull and press down. I'm gonna add another piece of tape around the top and you still see the white of my design. Oh, my tape curled up. <laughs> and I can still feel, you know, air down in here. So if you can see that. Looking for my squeegee, which I can't find. I'm gonna take this uh, bookmark and just see if I'm getting the pieces out with where the paper is creased just a little bit. All right, I'm going to add a little more tape and then we'll move on to shrink wrap. So with the shrink wrap, I'm not sure if you need to shrink wrap the entire um, flute. I actually cut my shrink wrap a little just so I could just have it more, more so at the top around, around the um, flute portion of the glass. So looking for my glove. And I have my heat gun. My heat gun gets very hot. This is, <laughs> I used to use my craft embossing tool, but now I actually have a heat gun that I purchased from Home Depot. It gets extremely hot, but it definitely gets the job done. So let's see. Definitely gonna be tricky. There's a little portion. We'll see if it comes that I can't get the um, wrinkle out right here. And I don't want to shred the shrink wrap, so I'm gonna leave it at that. And once my convection oven heats up, I will place it in the convection oven at around 390 degrees for 10 to 12 minutes. I, for my convection oven, I think I'm going to do, let's do 10 and a half to 11 minutes. Make sure that you are using an oven thermometer if you're using a convection oven, because the oven thermometer will tell you the actual temperature inside of your oven. If you look at your dial and you look at your thermometer, 
95% of the time, they're not at the same number. So be sure to use an oven thermometer to tell you, to get an accurate reading on the temperature. From my other heat press glove. Oops, sorry. This is <clears throat> still really hot, but I do find it easier to peel off the shrink wrap right after you take it out of the convection oven. Sorry guys, I gotta pull this up to me so that I can make sure I'm getting all the pieces off. I'm pretty sure I told you guys um, with last, last month's box how I had a love-hate relationship with shrink wrap. And today was no exception. So here is the finished glass. Um, there are two things that I'll say is my text was white. I'm looking for, I don't have it on anything else that, um, other than the candle. It's in on the candle, but it wasn't, this is still hot. It wasn't, um, of course it came up on there, but because this is frosted, you can't really see the white text. So I don't recommend using white. You can probably see it on the camera because my light is flashing on it or, or, uh, beaming on it. So I can see it through with the light, but it's not, uh, it's still not too bad, but I'm not a fan of that. And also one of the things I think I forgot to mention, or I, I personally realized about frosted glass is the lighter your design, the better. So their background was pretty dark. They were in a restaurant and there's a wine wall behind them. So the background was a little dark. Uh, my sister also has on black. So it made it dark, but again, just a test run. And then the only other thing is there are little, you can see it like this, almost like little nicks. So I don't know if I cooked it too long. What I really think these are, I know I nicked one using my scissors trying to get the shrink wrap off. So this may have been my finger or I, I was very careful in trying to get the shrink wrap off, but I know that I did nick one with the scissors. So as soon as I figure out nothing I've tried, guys, to get the shrink wrap off any easier has worked. And that includes trying to cut it on the seam. That's the whole great thing about the seam is you're supposed to be able to cut it a little bit and then pull it apart. But that has not been my story. <laughs> So I don't know if you have any tips on this shrink wrap, please put them down below and help me out. Help me to help you and everybody else because I'm willing to try anything when it comes to shrink wrap. Um, so here is my wine charm, my wine glass charm. We're going to put this on here. Actually, y'all, I'm nervous. That's still hot. Let me see. Oh, it's so cute. Can you guys see that? So cute with the wine charm. So we're going to try this again and see what we can come up with, see what works, what doesn't work. And we'll get back to you. I'll get back to you with another version of this, especially if you post some tips to help me down below. I'll try them. So thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see you in the next video. So this is my second attempt at the frosted wine flute. And this time I am going to place this in my convection oven. I did change the design. I changed the, des the design to look like this heart, but the letters are black. And I am going to put this in the convection oven at 400 degrees for 10 minutes. I am not going to use shrink wrap because I don't have a, um, a large design. So I'm just going to use the heat tape and I have it taped both uh, horizontal and vertical 
and I'm gonna place this in my convection oven. So I'll be right back. All right, crafters, it has been taken out of the convection oven. I'm going to start removing the tape. And it is pretty warm still. In this case, when I'm not using um, shrink wrap, I don't have a problem uh, letting this sit and cool. I'm trying to make sure I don't scratch the glass like I did with my scissors on the previous one. There we have it. I love it, love it, love it, love it. Once the ink is pretty much gone off of the paper. Um, so this came out really nice. <clears throat> Could have used a little bit more pressure right here on this side. It's just a little light, but I love it nonetheless. Once it cools off, I will put the charm back on there and this will be complete. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.